Uh, welcome, everyone, to the uh, Sergey Kovalev versus Igor McCalkin and Dmitry Bival versus Sullivan Barrera International Media Conference Call. Uh, this is Kathy Duva, and, uh, CEO of Main Events, and um, just want to, on a personal note, uh, tell everybody it's great to have you back after these, these few months, this long, cold winter. Um, happy to be to be able to be getting back into action. Um, at this time, um, participants are in a listen-only mode. And um, after some opening remarks, uh, each team will conduct a question and answer session. During the question and answer session, if you have a question, please press star one on your phone. And please note that this conference is being recorded. Uh, thank you to all the media who have dialed in on this call today to discuss two sensational championship fights in the light heavyweight division. Both bouts will air on HBO World Championship Boxing live from the theater at Madison Square Garden on Saturday, March 3rd at 10.05 p.m. Eastern and Pacific time. Um, our four fighters will join the call in the following order. First, we'll hear from Sullivan Barrera, uh, and then his opponent, WBA World Light Heavyweight Champion, Dimitri Bivol. Next, you'll have the opportunity to meet and talk with Igor Mikalkin, calling in today from training camp in Germany. Uh, and we do have a translator on, on, on the call to help him out um, with, with the questions. And finally, uh, two-time light heavyweight world champion Sergey Crusher Kovalev will talk with you and take your questions. Uh, also joining our call are Igor Klimas, manager of Sergey Kovalev, Errol Ceylon, promoter for Igor Mikalkin, Vadim Kornilov, manager for Dmitry Bivol, Gennady Mashayanov, trainer for Dmitry Bivol, Luis Molina, manager of Sullivan Barrera. Derek Santos, trainer of Sullivan Barrera. Uh, the main event between Sergey Kovalev and Igor McCalkin is a 12-round matchup for the WBO light heavyweight world title. The co-main event, uh, which features light heavyweight world champion Dimitri Vival versus Sullivan Barrera, is a 12-round title fight. Tickets range from $50 to $300. They are moving very well and are available online at Ticketmaster.com. Uh, in person at Madison Square Garden box office and directly through main events by dialing our office at 973-200-7050 or sending an email to boxing at mainevents.com. The event is promoted by Main Events, Crusher Promotions, and World of Boxing in association with EC Box Promotions and will be televised live on HBO World Championship Boxing. Uh, we, will, we, we will also be featuring, a fa for those who can be there in person, a fantastic undercard. Um, Jolie Mazzone, as always, has outdone herself, and we will be uh, featuring a lot of, uh, actually a, a total, I think, of 11 bouts at this point, of uh, all young people who are local, who are local and, uh, uh, or, or from some from Eastern Europe, from all over the world, actually, uh, who are going to be in really great competitive fights. So it's a, it's a good night to be there in person. And now I'm going to turn this over to our lovely operator, Katina, and she will take it from here. And ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, if you have any questions at this time, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. And I'm waiting for callers to join the queue. Go ahead and press that star 1, please. Uh, can, can Mr. Barrera, go, Mr. Sullivan Barrera, could you go ahead and speak, please? Yeah. What? Sullivan, why don't, you, why don't you tell us how you feel about uh, this fight coming up? I feel right. Um, you know, my training, my training camp, we are going to walk to, so that's what I, what I, where, that's what I, for I, I waiting, waiting, like the title fight, so that's just the very important fight for me, so I'm very happy for that. Okay, thank you, Sullivan. You're welcome. Yes, now we have a question in queue from Keith Eidick. Uh Please go ahead. Uh, yes, Sullivan, can you tell us what went into your decision to take the Bivol fight over fighting uh, Kovalev in the main event that night? Uh, Luis, uh, la, la, Se campeón, el, el tipo, sí, yo entiendo, yo entiendo la pregunta, lo que, lo que quiero hablar en español, ¿me entiendes? Oh, okay. So... He's he's gonna tell me, and I'm gonna translate it for him. Okay. Yeah. Like, yo te, yo tuve dos ofertas pa, para una pelea conseguir Kovalev, donde en la primera donde en la primera pelea 
se me ofreció un, una buena suma de dinero, pero no era una pelea por, por título. Y como no era una pelea por título, no, 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 tú sabes, no, no, para, para cualquier atleta de alto rendimiento de, o de este nivel, eh, lo más importante es pelear por el título. Y yo creo que yo, después de la derrota con Wall, eh, soy merecedor de eso. Y por eso no acepté la pelea. En una segunda, en una segunda, en una segunda oferta, eh, o sea, me ofrecieron menos dinero, me ofrecieron menos dinero y, y me ofrecieron extender mi, mi contrato, que en una primera oferta eso tampoco estu, estaba estaba en línea. Y, y por eso fue mi decisión de tomar la pelea con, con Vigol. Fue por menos dinero, pero no, tú sabes, no, no no tengo ningún ningún tipo no tengo ninguno de esos inconvenientes. He uh, was offered the uh, the Sergey Kovalev fight initially uh, for a substantial amount more money than the second time. Uh, there was no title fight uh, on the line, and he feels that after the Ward fight, you know, he was worthy of you know finally fighting for a title. Uh, the second time around, when they offered him the Kovala fight, it was for considerably less money, um, and they wanted to extend his contract. So that is the reason why he decided uh, to fight uh, Bevel. Is that the end of the question? Uh, so, yeah, Sullivan, can you um, can you tell us what you think of Bivol so far, and uh, if you think maybe what people are writing about him, what people have been saying about him, is justified based on what he's done in the ring thus far? Entendió. Uh, ¿Qué piensa de vivo? Que la gente que lo lo que está escribiendo la gente de vivo, usted piensa que lo están haciendo haciendo como el mejor. ¿Qué piensa con él? Eh, es justificable. La, eh, no, yo respeto a todos los peleadores y, y vivo en un muchacho joven con, con talento, pero, o sea, yo yo soy un boxeador con experiencia, me he enfrentado a muy buenos oponentes y, y creo que, que el 3 de marzo, tú sabes, vivo de, 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 tendrá que demostrar que él, o sea, lo que la gente está escribiendo de él. Yo por mi parte voy a hacer mi trabajo. He respects yeah. all fighters. So, uh, he's a really young, talented uh, fighter. He respects anyone that gets in the ring. Um, at the end of the day, when he, when he steps into the ring, he's going to have to prove everything that all the writers are saying about him. Why will this fight be different than Bivol's previous fights? Because Sullivan obviously is the most experienced or you know most accomplished fighter that Bivol will have fought. Que porque esta pelea más distinta que las otras peleas. Si esta, si obviamente usted es el el peleador con más eh, experiencia que se ha enfrentado vivo. No, no, para, o sea, para mí eh, la importancia de una pelea de título. Eso, 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 o sea, esa, esa es la diferencia. Eh, yo me estoy enfrentando a un peleador joven, yo he peleado con, con todo, o sea, la gran mayoría de los oponentes míos han sido jóvenes y, y, y nada, yo no he tenido ningún problema, o sea, yo no tengo ningún problema con Vivo. Lo, la importancia de esta pelea es que es una pelea de título y ese es el sueño mío de ser campeón mundial. Yeah, all, all his opponents have been younger than him. Uh, you know, the, the importance here is that it's a title fight. And he's going in there knowing that it's a title fight. He's preparing like this is the most important fight. Uh, he understands that he was a younger guy, and he's used to that. Um, was that the end of the question? Yes. Okay, our next question is going to come from Jorge from the Miami Herald News. Please go ahead. Oye, Zulian, primero que todo, eh, mucha suerte, muchas cosas buenas. 
Eh, ¿Sientes tú que, que, que no te has ganado todavía el respeto, Sullivan, que todavía la gente no te ve con el respeto que tú te has ganado en las peleas y que esta pelea finalmente te dé ese reconocimiento cuando seas campeón del mundo? Uh, Jorge, eh, las la personas, tú sabes, el, el, los fanáticos del boxeo son muy, son muy estrictos y, y a veces y a veces a veces exigen mucho. Para mí, para mí, créeme sinceramente te digo, no, no, no es nada. Eso me da, eso me da motivación, eso me da fuerza que que la gente como que como que quiera más de mí. O sea, su le dan la, le ganó a este que no que no era el favorito, su le dan le ganó a otro que no era el favorito, pero ellos quieren ver más de su. ¿no? Eso para mí es algo algo que me que me que me da fuerza, que me da energía para para seguir para seguir adelante y para seguir demostrándole a la gente que que yo soy un gran peleador. Otra pregunta más. Eh, eh, yo sé que tú solamente no quieres mirar adelante, no quieres pensar en lo que viene en el futuro, pero si sales el vencedor de Vivol eh, entonces sí veríamos una, algún tipo de unificación con Cobales uh, el, el juez, claro el, yo o sea yo no tengo ningún problema en, en enfrentar a, a seguir Cobales no tengo ningún tipo de problema eh, creo que ya derrotando a Vivo sería o sea sería lo de, me ganaría la palabra es me ganaría el derecho, o sea, de, de las cosas de, lo, de las cosas que estoy pidiendo, ya sería campeón y ya una unificación ya no tengo ningún problema ningún problema con, ni, con, ni enfrentarme a Seigay, ni a ninguno de los campeones y el, el, el que venga yo estoy listo para el que sea, nosotros entrenamos duro para, para el que sea Ok, muchas gracias man. De nada Uh, I believe that's the end of that question, so I think that the next question goes for, to uh, Salvador Rodriguez from ESPN Deportes. Please go ahead. Hola, Sullivan. ¿Cómo estás? Buenas tardes. Sí, buenas tardes. Si quieres, te pregunto en español y que tu manager nos ayude a, a traducir al inglés para que también sea mejor para los compañeros. Te quería yo preguntar primero, ¿cómo esperas la pelea con Vivol? Es un peleador que ha mostrado, a pesar de su inexperiencia profesional, ha mostrado muy buenas cosas. Y tú te has probado con, contra lo mejor de la categoría, pero no te ha faltado el campeonato. ¿Cómo esperas tú la pelea de campeonato? Uh, yo espero, espero una pelea competitiva. Eh, o sea, es un boxeador que, 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 que está demostrando que tiene talento, pero, pero no ha peleado, o sea, no, no ha enfrentado a, a, a boxeadores de, de nivel de su vida carrera. Creo que Creo que esta va a ser la prueba más fuerte para él y entonces ahí tendrá que él probar que él es un verdadero campeón. ¿Quiere traducir esa? Voy a preguntar una, voy a hacer una pregunta más. De, de, Luis, que si traducir lo que dije. Uh, the, the question was, Harry, era, ¿usted qué pensaba de la... De la... ¿Cómo esperaba la pelea? ¿Cómo esperaba la pelea con Vivol? Y dice que... ¿Qué did Sullivan expect a... Uh, from the fight, uh, from fighting Vivo, and Sullivan's response was, you know, he thinks this, this is going to be his uh, biggest test. He hasn't fought any, anyone with the experience that he has had, and it should be a very competitive fight. Y por último, eh, preguntarle a Sullivan el momento que el que vive el boxeo cubano eh, perdió recién Guillermo Dórticos en una gran pelea, perdió Guillermo Rigondó, y hay pocos personajes que le quedan al boxeo cubano. Está Luis Ortiz. Está Sullivan Barrera y está Erislán Dilara. ¿Es momento de que Sullivan pueda dar la cara por el boxeo cubano? Sí, claro que sí. Sullivan va a dar la cara por el boxeo cubano. Y, por supuesto, voy a entregar lo mejor de mí. Y, con el favor de Dios, el 3 de marzo vamos a ser los nuevos campeonatos del mundo. Uh, the question was that the uh, Cuban uh, boxing has had uh, some recent defeats. Uh, the people that are left, the fighters that are left to fight is Ortiz, uh, it is Landy Lara and Sullivan Barrera. Do you think uh, you can be the show face for the Cuban uh, boxing system? Uh, Sullivan's response was, of course, yes, uh, I believe so. Gracias a todos. Thanks so much. Gracias.
Our next question is going to come from Greg, and Greg Leon from the Boxing um, Talk. Please go ahead. Kathy, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. I have a two-part question for you before I ask Sullivan a couple of questions. I don't know how much of this you'll be able to divulge, but why was Sullivan offered less money to fight Bivol than Kovalev? Well, actually, um, while we were discussing the Kovalev fight, a lot of numbers got thrown around, but as far as the offer is concerned, it was the same, uh, the actual offer. But uh, okay. that's my recollection of the negotiation. Sullivan also made a reference that extending the contract, but I'm a little confused by that. Wouldn't him become a champion and extend the contract? Uh, not at this time, no. He's been, uh, you know, Sullivan's been with Main Events a long time. That contract has run, and we were working on an, uh, another one um, where that was not one featured in the contract. Um, we did absolutely ask for options. Uh, it's a voluntary defense, and that's typically the way things work. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Sullivan. Yes. How's it going, brother? What weaknesses do you see in Dimitri Bivol that you feel you'll be able to expose on March 3rd? ¿Usted qué que, que le ve de, de, de grave a, a, a Bivol que usted pueda eh, explotar el día de la pelea? Ya, yo creo que lo, lo, más, lo más importante es que yo, como, eh, la experiencia que tengo, o sea, me he enfrentado a mejores peleadores y, y, y creo que eso creo que eso va a ser la diferencia del 3 de marzo. No, uh, the biggest difference is the experience. You know, I, I feel that I fought different, uh, a lot more experienced fighters, and I believe strongly that that will be the biggest difference come March 3rd. If main events was able to take you from a virtually unknown commodity in the United States to a world champion who's fighting on HBO, why wouldn't you want to extend your contract with them? If you said no, era nadie cuando main events lo cogió usted. ¿Por qué ahora que main events lo ha vuelto alguien importante y peleando por un título, por qué no seguir en contratado con main events? Uh, yo no he dicho que, que o sea, eh, básicamente la, 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 la condición, o sea, las condiciones me ofrecieron menos dinero y me están ofreciendo un contrato de pelea y, y nadie, con, 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 o sea, yo le doy muchas gracias a mí y Ben por, por todo lo que ha hecho por mí y no estoy diciendo que mañana no vaya a, a, a firmar con ellos. Solamente que está, o sea, ese, ese contrato para la pelea con Sergey no me gustó así y, y en ese momento no quise tomarlo. Uh, he's never said that he was never going to re-sign with him or continue to do business with him. Uh, just that the offer that was made to him initially for the Kovala fight was something that wasn't up to par with what he wanted. And uh, he's very thankful for everything Main Events has done for him and continues to do for him. Uh, what the future holds is after this fight. So is this fight Sullivan betting on himself to improve the offers that he receives for main events? So, usted está apostando que al ganar esta pelea eh, las, las ofertas que main events le dé a usted van a ser mejor? Yeah, yo, yo estoy apostando a que después que yo sea campeón del WBA, yo soy merecedor de, de, de una buena oferta. Yeah. Porque tengo el título. Uh, yes, that once he's a champion, the WBA champion, that, of course, uh, help being a champion, the offers do get much better. Gracias, Sullivan. Buena suerte en los tres. Gracias. Igualmente. I would like to thank um, Sullivan Barrera and Luis Molina for joining us today. And now we're going to turn the call over, and you can introduce Dimitri. We have him on the line now. Yes. All right. All right. I'm sorry. I'm, um, sorry. I thought Katina was going to do it. Uh, Dimitri. Uh, uh, Dimitri. Uh, B-Ball is on the line now, and he is a. Uh, the world champion, WBA title holder. He is 
fantastic fighter. We are partners with uh, World of Boxing on this promotion and delighted to be working with him. And so uh, I'm going to uh, give a few words. Coming up. Dimitri? Yes, yes, I'm here. Do you have anything you'd like to say? I think there's a little bit of an echo uh, somewhere. Vadik, ты меня слышишь? Да, да, слышу. Хорошо. А Барреру ты слышал? Да, сейчас уже все слышат. Так что ты говори уже по... по... А, короче, для всех, да? Слушай, ну... Как Скажи пару слов. Это, ты, ты переводи тогда тоже будешь, да? Так же. Правильно? Ну, вообще, вроде бы, переводчик должен был быть. Кэти, uh, do we have a interpreter on the line or no or should i translate we do we have a professional interpreter on the line sergey uh hi how are you i'm here привет дим сергей вот переводит и uh, кэти тебя при, uh, только что представила всем скажи пару слов поприветствуй всех Алло. Алло. Дим, у вас что-то со связью там? Да у нас все в порядке со связью, Вадим. Вас не слышно? Э -э сейчас слышно? Не знаю, я попробовал интернет отключить сейчас. Сейчас да, слышно, сейчас хорошо, Вадим. Алло. Сергей, ты хочешь переводить для него? Yes, uh, he was just trying to connect. He There were some problems with connection, so uh, all he said was, hello, how are you? And then he didn't say anything afterwards. Okay. Uh, well, uh, we can open up the lines um, for questioning um, for um, Mr. Dimitri. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Сейчас тебе начнут задавать вопросы, Дим. Хорошо. So our first question is going to come from Keith Eidick from the boxing scene dot com. Please go ahead. Dimitri, earlier Sullivan said that the reason that he took the fight against you as opposed to uh Kovalev was about money. Why do you think that he took the fight? Дим, до этого Сальван Барре рассказал, что он uh, согласился на бой с тобой uh, именно из-за денег. А почему ты думаешь, он согласился с тобой сражаться? Uh, ну, у меня нет оснований, в принципе, не доверять Сальвану Барреру. Я не знаю, врет он или нет, но, видимо, это так, раз он так говорит. Но я думаю, это уже не важно. Сейчас важно выйти и отбоксировать нам. Окей. Okay. Uh, the response was that uh, he does not have any reason not to believe that the reason why he took the fight, the reason why Sullivan took the fight was because of the money. But uh, at this point, it doesn't matter why he decided to do it, because now the only thing that's left is the fight itself. Does he think that uh, Sullivan views him as an easier opponent than Kovalev also? Do you think that Sullivan is willing to fight with you because you are a slower opponent than Kovalev? Ну, до этого у меня были такие мысли, но тогда я не знал, что Салливан за денег не согласился с Ковалевым. Ну, теперь я, наверное, буду... Э, ну, на, наверное, есть в этом правда какая-то, да? Почему бы мне не поверить Салливану, что он за денег? So, at first, uh, those were the thoughts that uh, Dmitry might have had, that maybe he was a weaker opponent. But now that Sullivan has stated that it's because of the money, uh, it, he's he's going to understand that maybe Sullivan is correct. He just did it because of the money. So he might think about that he's weaker, but he doesn't necessarily have a reason to not believe Sullivan. My last question for Dimitri is, what is his opinion of Sullivan Barrera, who obviously has a lot of international experience and has fought some top light heavyweights? Uh, Какие у тебя мысли? Что ты думаешь о, о Барреле, у которого а, очень много опыта интернационального и так далее? Как ты думаешь о нем как боксере? Uh, ну, конечно же, 
Я уважаю его как боксера, и действительно у него много опыта. Ну и у меня тоже немало опыта. Конечно, меньше профессионального, но у меня тоже есть хорошие боксерские качества, которые должны мне помочь, которым я доверяю и в которые я верю, что могут привести меня к победе. Of course, he knows that Salvin has uh, lots of experience and lots of fights behind him. But uh, Dmitry knows that he also has uh, a lot of experience, might not as much as uh, Barrera, but still uh, lots of experience, good quality fights. And Dmitry believes that he's got good qualities that he can trust, he can trust into himself to win this fight. How much does Dmitry feel that he has to prove himself in this fight? Because Sullivan obviously is the, the best opponent that he'll have faced. Кажется ли тебе, Дима, что ты должен доказать себя в этом бою, поскольку uh, Баррера один из лучших uh, оппонентов, с которыми ты сражался? Ну, действительно, он один, он лучший оппонент, из которых он, из всех, которые у меня были. И для меня, на самом деле, каждый бой очень важен. Я в каждом бою стараюсь себя показать максимально, потому что, на самом деле, каждый бой в карьере важен. И этот бой, разумеется, не исключение. Я должен показать все самое лучшее, как в принципе предыдущий я старался это делать. So he's uh, definitely aware that Barrera is probably the the one of the best fighters that he's ever faced, uh, probably the best fighter. But to him, every fight is uh, important, and for him, every fight, everything's on the line. So he needs to go out and do his best and uh, make sure that he shows himself with his best qualities and do his best fighting. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, our next question is going to come from Destinio um, Lewis from the Black Star News from New York. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, Destinio Lewis, Black Star News. Dimitri, we spoke a lot some time ago when you visited New York, and you impressed me as a, an articulate young man who has the future in 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 his eyesight. Uh, do you believe that perhaps because of the fact that you've only had 12 fights and you're a champion at an early age, you're considered a rookie, so to speak, and 10 Ks, 10 KOs, and, and, and 10 KOs only, that Barrera accepted you because of the fact that uh, you were the lesser opponent in the terms of a championship fight as opposed to Sergei Kovalev or and or uh, uh, Superman Stevens, who's fighting Badu Jack. Okay. Uh, вопрос практически похож на другой. Uh, считаешь, этот человек с тобой уже говорил, когда вы были в Нью-Йорке, uh, ты им очень понравился, ты очень, uh, очень умно себя представлял, очень правильно все говорил и, в принципе, ведешь правильный путь по своей карьере. Uh, но поскольку у тебя всего 12 боев, и ты в очень uh, uh, раннем возрасте стал чемпионом, а uh, из этих боев 10 нокаутовых, uh, опять же, считаешь ли ты, что Барера согласился с тобой именно поэтому, потому что ты как бы, ну, в кавычках, новичок, новичок по сравнению с Сергеем Ковалевым? Uh, ну, или... ну, ну да, ответим точно так же, что когда я не знал, да, почему причины выбора меня как оппонента у Барера, тогда я, наверное, думал, что, видать, он подумал, что я буду для него более легкой добычи. Но теперь он заявил, что это все из-за денег. С Ковалевым ему, по-моему, предложили не так много денег, он согласился со мной буксировать. Но у меня нет причин не доверять Барреле. Я думаю, это вообще это совершенно не важно. Да? Важно, то, как... важно то, что он согласился на этот бой, и, и я рад, что этот бой состоится. Okay. So the answer is, uh, he... He, at first, as he said before, at first he might have thought that, you know, maybe uh, Barrera decides to fight me because I'm a weaker opponent between the two. But uh, as Barrera stated, he accepted the fight from Kovalev specifically because of the money. So now uh, Dmitry knows that that is why that fight was uh, was arranged. Uh, at the end, though, he is very happy that Barrera decided to fight him. and uh, And he has no reason not to trust Barrera that he picked him specifically because of the money. So uh, that is why he's he's happy that they get to fight. I see. All right, thank you. Uh, Bivol, uh, knowing that this is your 
a title fight, you're defending your title fight against, uh, I guess it's expected, the veteran, which is Barrera, who's for Andre Ward and for Joe Smith and guys with more records than you. Uh, without giving out any trade secrets, what are you doing extra to make sure that your hand is raised in victory March 3rd in terms of training? Uh -huh. Поскольку тебе придется защищать свой титул против человека, который уже сражался и с Андрей Уордом, и со Смитом, ты что-нибудь, не, не выдавая своих секретов, каким образом ты тренируешься, какие-то определенные вещи делаешь в тренировках, чтобы удостовериться в том, что им на твою руку подымут в конце боя? Ну, вы знаете, я всегда считаю то, что человек должен делать то, что он умеет делать, да? То есть не нужно изобретать велосипед, там, чтобы что-то доказать. Вот у меня есть мои хорошие качества да, боксерские, я их стараюсь развивать. Они у меня хорошие, но я хочу сделать их идеальными. Может быть, это невозможно, но я к этому стремлюсь, и я их развиваю. И я не буду ничего нового придумывать, я буду делать то, что я умею хорошо. И мой лагерь практически всегда проходит, как бы, вроде, ну, практически всегда он идет одинаково, наверное. Единственное, спарринг-партнеры усложняются. А в целом все так же. Я собираюсь сделать то, что я умею делать хорошо в ринге. Uh -huh. И я, я в это верю, что это может мне помочь. All right. So the answer is, uh, uh, Dmitry believes that a person must do uh, what he does, what he knows how to do. Mm. Right? And so yes. mm. uh, he knows his good qualities and he makes sure that every time he's in practice, he is perfecting the art of boxing, is perfecting his skills. So he knows that he's not perfect, but he wants to make sure that he keeps on getting to perfection. And so nothing specific new is happening in camp. His camp is always tough. His camp is always good. Uh, it's pretty much the same. The only thing that's different might be is uh, tougher sparring partners. But other than that, he knows his good qualities and he knows that he wants to continue doing uh, good what he does good, which is boxing. Thank you very much. That's a good quality in a fighter, even at a young age. Thank you very much, uh, Bivol, and uh, God bless you, and Godspeed in uh, March 3rd. Thank you. Thank you. It's a very good quality in you, that you are very well prepared for your preparation, and keep your God and good luck to you. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Jeff from Hit First Boxing. Please go ahead. Dimitri. This is your New York City debut, your first fight in the United States of America, HBO co-main event, Matthew Horn Theater. What are your feelings on that? Your uh, debut in New York is your uh, first fight in America uh, in HBO. How do you feel about that? What are your feelings about that? Well, it's not my first fight in HBO, it's not in America, but it's the first fight in New York. Именно, да? И я рад, что я буду боксировать там, конечно. Вот у моего тренера есть такая мечта, чтобы его ученик отбоксировал в Мэдисон Сквер Гарден в главном бою на большой арене. Но 3 марта будет маленький шажочек к этой мечте. So he's he's very excited about his his uh, debut in New York, his first fight in New York, of course, Madison Square Garden, and his uh, his trainer, his coach, uh, his dream, the dream of his coach is to have his uh, main fighter fight in the main card main event uh, in Madison Square Garden so this is a, a small step towards that dream of his coaches beautiful now with Barrera what are his strengths and weaknesses that you've seen in his fights какие ты видишь недостатки в Барера какие слабости ты видишь перед этим боем в нем сложно сказать какие прям ну, у, у всех есть свои недостатки, конечно, но, э, не знаю, давайте не будем говорить о его недостатках, наверное, и посмотрим все вот эти вот минусы в ринге. Uh, every fighter has his own weaknesses, and uh, he, he doesn't necessarily want to discuss what Barrera's weaknesses are. Uh, I think the best way to see it is just to see the fight and see where he was stronger and where he was weaker. Thank you. Like they say, let the best man win. Thank you. Как говорится, пусть лучше из вас победит. Thank you. Yes, our next question is going to come from Greg Leon from Boxing Talk. Please go ahead. How's it going, guys? Hope all is well. 
We saw Andre Ward handle Sullivan Barrera rather easily. Will Dimitri look to deploy some of the same tactics? Мы видели, что Андрей Ward достаточно легко разбился с Барерой. Хочешь ли ты применять какие-нибудь такие же тактики, как и Ward? Uh, ну, Ворд показал на самом деле, что он uh, по скорости очень хорошо смог, uh, за счет скорости он смог преодолеть Бареру, за счет uh, своей подвижности и uh, за счет подвижности своего туловища, грубо говоря, за счет uh, уклонов. Uh, ну, на наверное, это что-то что можно из этого использовать, да. Uh, Ward showed uh, a lot of good speed in the fight. He showed a lot of good movement, a lot of body movement in the fight. And uh, possibly this is some of the things that Dimitri would like to, to use in the fight as well. We've seen Sullivan go down in the first round of each of his last two fights. Will Dimitri look to jump on him? Does he see himself getting off to a fast start, knowing that in the last two fights, whether he came out cold or for whatever the reason, he's been down early? Соливан uh, был в нокдауне, по-моему, в двух или трех своих предыдущих боях uh, в первом раунде. Uh, хочешь ли ты тоже начать очень быстро этот бой, чтобы послать его в нокдаун в первом же раунде, uh -huh. чтобы не дать ему возможности загреться? Uh, нет, такой задачи прямо у меня нет. Я буду действовать по ситуации. Если у меня будет какая-то возможность э, сделать что-то, конечно же, я буду пользоваться этой возможностью закончить бой раньше, к примеру, да. Все, все зависит от ситуации. То есть тут нельзя говорить, если Барера пропускает нокдауны в первом раунде, то я обязательно должен это сделать. Нет. Посмотрим. So he's not, he's, he's not lining up to necessarily In his opinion, is the fight going the distance? Как ты думаешь, этот бой продлится все раунды? Не знаю, но я по крайней мере тренируюсь на все 12 раундов, стараюсь, чтобы моя выносливость меня не подвела в случае боя 12 раундов. He's training for all 12 rounds. Uh, he's not sure if it's gonna go that that long, but he's uh, he's training himself. He's training his stamina, making sure he's got enough enough energy for all 12 rounds. It's his first title defense. It's at the Garden in New York. Does does Dimitri want this to be an all-out war, a dogfight, or would he prefer it to be a high IQ boxing match, basically? Это первая защита титула в Нью-Йорке, Мэнсон Сквер Гарден. Ты хочешь, чтобы это была просто баталия невероятная, война, или это будет для тебя стратегический бой с высоким, ну, интеллигентный бой? Uh, ну, я вообще всегда стараюсь боксировать так, чтобы голова была у меня свежая, и всегда стараюсь ну, думать о тех действиях, которые я делаю. То есть это, наверное, говорит о том, что ну, техничный какой-то бой, видать. Но самое главное не в этом. Я хочу, чтобы после этого боя люди, кто будет смотреть этот бой, остались довольными, и они захотели в будущем, в скором будущем gotcha uh so when he comes out to fight he always tries to fight fight with a high iq he wants to make sure that he's responsible for the movement that he makes that he understands what's going on he's always thinking on his feet but of course after the fight he wants to make sure that the the fight was also entertaining for the fans and and the fans would like to see him fight again and are excited about him fighting okay very good thank you guys best of luck on the third Thank you. Okay, I would like to thank you, Dimitri um, Bovala, for joining us in the Dom Cornerland. And so now we have on the line, um, we're going to have introduce him to the call, Errol Salem and Igor Mahalan. Mahalan. Um, if you have any questions for him, you can please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, if you have any questions for these gentlemen, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. And I'm waiting for callers to join the queue at this present time. Hello together. You hear us from Hamburg? Hello? 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 This is Errol speaking from Hamburg, yeah. Do you hear us? Hi, Earl. Um, this is Errol Salon, everyone. He is the uh, uh, 
say we are the excuse me the promoter for Igor McCalkin, who will be opposing Sergey Kovalev on March 3rd, um, and uh, is, uh, uh, Errol is Igor with you? Yes, he's close to me. Okay, and also uh, there's a gentleman named Sergey on the call who is uh, an interpreter and has been doing a lovely job so far, and so he's there to assist you. That's getting better. I think uh, Katina will take it from here. Correct, Katina? Yes, I will. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. And our first question is going to come from Chris Williams from the Boxing Info. Please go ahead. Hey, Igor, Chris Williams, the Boxing Info. I wanted to ask you, um, just looking at the uh, Kovalev fight in the past, you know, will you focus on, I guess, what everybody sees as his biggest weakness going to the body? Is that something you're going to stress going into this fight? Uh, если ты просматривал uh, другие бои Сергея uh, Ковалева, uh, заметно, что uh, у него есть недостаток, это то, что uh, его, его бьют достаточно часто в, в корпус. Uh, будешь ли ты рассматривать такие возможности тоже проходить его uh, в корпус ударами? Кому? Ковалеву или Барыну? Да. Ковалеву. Подожди, ну... Дим, это, это не это не Диме, это уже теперь Игорю. А, все. А, так а, а мы свободны в итоге или нет? Я так понимаю, да. I'm sorry, guys, there's a little, there's a little confusion between uh, Igor and Dmitri. So Dmitri is uh, free to go at this point. No, Igor, yeah. can I'm sorry? Yes, Dmitri is free to go. Окей, Дим, ты свободен, да, спасибо большое. Спасибо, да, давайте, счастливо. Игорь, привет и пока. Всем всем привет, я на связи. Вопрос про корпус, да? Да, вопрос про корпус, будешь ли ты пытаться проходить в его, как бы, слабое место, то есть удары в корпус? Ну, когда я боксирую, я пытаюсь бить как по голове, так и по корпусу. То есть бить буду, работать по ситуации, пробовать работать по ситуации. Окей, so the answer for Игорь is... Uh... He is going to judge it by the situation. He's going to see how it goes. And he also tries to hit in the head as well as uh, go in the body. So uh, he's going to assess the situation as the fight proceeds. Okay. And then my final question, him coming into the garden, fighting on the big stage on HBO in the main event, um, what is it that he wants? If he can write the perfect script, how would he want this fight to play out? Uh, поскольку ты будешь uh, ну, в Madison Square Garden, в Нью-Йорке, на HBO, главное событие, uh, если бы ты мог написать uh, просто лучший сценарий этого вечера, что бы ты как бы, хотел загадать на этот вечер? Я никогда не был в Нью-Йорке, никогда не был в Madison Square Garden. Ну, конечно, Madison Square Garden – это мечта любого боксера, боксировать там главный бой. У меня сейчас такая возможность предоставилась. То есть, ну, для, для меня это очень важный бой, ответственное мероприятие, не волнительное мероприятие. Я буду боксировать не, не только главный бой, но я буду боксировать главным, главным скажем, боксером по утерелу Ореза, Сергеем Ковалев. Так что сценарий, ну, сценарий будем писать 3 марта. Окей. Uh, so, uh, obviously, it's a dream of every boxer uh, to a main event. Uh, Medicine Square Garden. Uh, it's a, obviously a dream fight for him. It's very important for him. He's very excited about it. Um, and he uh, he's not only fighting the main fight on the main card, he's also fighting the main fighter in the light heavyweight division. So uh, he's going to write the perfect script on March 3rd and, you know, hopefully he's victorious. Okay. So would he want it to end in a knockout or just he just wants to win? Uh, ты хотел бы uh, нокаут его послать или просто хочешь выиграть? Uh, yes. Я боксирую принципиально по очкам. Я никого не хочу отправлять нокаут. Я просто делаю свою работу так, как я умею. Боксирую так, как я умею. И если, скажем, я никогда не был панчером, то, то я не буду становиться ему сейчас. То есть я, как бы, такие вещи не загадываю, это точно. Okay. Я боксирую uh, so... принципиально по очкам. Проблема от боксировать 12 раундов мне не составляет, скажем, труда, физических кондиций не хватает боксировать 12 раундов. То есть мне удовольствие боксировать 12 раундов. Окей, okay, so, uh, 
he's uh he's going for for points he he's going for doing a good job in in boxing he never was uh you know a puncher so he never necessarily is aiming for a knockout uh he's conditioned to fight all 12 rounds he enjoys fighting all 12 rounds so he's going to go and do a, a fight technically and uh and see how it goes okay all right gentlemen thank you and good luck on march 3rd good luck to you our next question is going to come from Destinio Lewis from the Black Star News. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Igor McCalkin, this is Destinio Lewis, Black Star News. You're making your debut in the Mecca Boxing Master Square Garden. Uh, the date is March 3rd. Have you begun to develop <laughs> perhaps a little bit of butterfly stage frights, not only because this is your debut, but you're fighting, as it was mentioned before, the number one, the person who's a champion, and you're fighting for a third world title in Madison Square Garden. And and I might add, what extra are you doing to make sure that your hand, not Sergei, is raised in victory on uh, March 3rd? Your uh, debut in Madison Square Garden, the most famous arena, наверняка у тебя какой-то есть небольшой ну, страх, бабочки в животе летают и так далее, и а, ты боксируешь с очень, с очень важным боксером и идешь на, на третью защиту титула. А, что ты делаешь для того, чтобы именно твою руку подняли в конце боя, а не, а не Сергея? Ну, я упорно и усердно тренируюсь, как всегда. То есть, а что касается волнения, то есть, ну, скажем, конечно, волнение у меня есть перед любым боем. Здесь, скажем, главный бой в моей карьере я буду самым лучшим противником по тяжелому И это, конечно, все ответственно. В зале я делаю все, что надо для того, чтобы быть в хорошей форме в этот день. Так что волнения перед Мэдисон Сквер Гардена у меня нет. То есть в Америке, так в Америке. С удовольствием изучу Мэдисон Сквер Гарден в Нью-Йорк. С удовольствием буду портировать в Нью-Йорке. Okay. Uh, so, so in order for him to, uh, what he's doing, he's uh, he's conditioning and training really hard. He's making yes. him very well prepared for the fight. Uh, his uh, this is most likely the the most important fight in his career. This is the 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 greatest opponent he's ever fought. So, uh, before before every fight, of course, there's a little bit of butterflies. Uh, so, because it's a Madison Square Garden necessarily, as opposed to another arena, it's not any more frightening than than other places. So he's he's happy to be there. He's happy to make uh, his debut in Madison Square Garden, and he's uh, he's making sure that he's training really hard to uh, keep this fight uh, in his uh, in his favor. Uh, one last question: uh, and the fact that, uh, in terms of advantages or disadvantages, but the fact that he is a southpaw and has fought very well, he has a very good record of 21 victories, although. Only nine knockouts, but still, you know, that shows that he has a lot of talent. Uh, it, it, does the southpaw stance uh, will be to his advantage? You think? Поскольку ты стоишь в левой стойке, у тебя 21 победа, всего лишь девять, он говорит из них нокаутных, но все равно, как бы, ты считаешь, что левая стойка для тебя будет, ну, как бы, лучше, что ты в левой стойке или нет? Но тебе поможет? Я думаю, что да, потому что обычно она мне помогает, моя левосторонняя стойка. Да, то есть это... ответ да. Uh, so, so yes, the the answer to your question is yes. He thinks that uh, being a southpaw is going to be in his uh, advantage. Uh, and uh, basically, the short answer is yes. He thinks so. <laughs> okay, thank you. God bless. And welcome to New York. I'll see you March third. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Greg Leon from the Boxing Talk. Please go ahead. How's it going, guys? Good. How do you like Earlier, Igor said that he trains for the distance, and as evidenced by his records, his last several fights, he's gone the distance. But he hasn't been in there with somebody like Kovalev. Has he been sparring with bigger punchers than normal as an, as an effort to try to simulate that power in sparring? 
А, это, это заметно, и ты говорил уже раньше, что ты всегда тренируешься, чтобы пройти все 12 раундов, но а, поскольку ты сражаешься с таким человеком, как Ковалев, а, приглашал ли ты а, для своих спарринг-партнеров каких-нибудь а, панчеров, которые Слышь могут... Слышь меня, да? Ну да, тренируешься спарринг-партнеры, которые достаточно бьющие. То есть бить ему, конечно, ребята. Так что, конечно, мы здесь не готовимся к этому бою. Окей. Uh, okay, so the answer is yes. He is uh, inviting sparring partners that are that are bigger part punchers that are trying to imitate, let's say, the the style of Kovalev. So he's prepared for when it's time to fight on March third. Are there any nuances? Is there anything else that he's doing differently than normal? Какие-то нюансы, что ты ты делаешь uh, как бы по другому, не так как обычно, специально для этого боя или нет? Нет, кстати, когда я хотел начать подготовку тренировочного лагеря, я думал, может быть, что-то поменять, что-то поменять в лагере, который заводить, или решить эту тренировку. Но я понял, что я пришел в этом месте, если не тренировки в тренировочном лагере. Так что, в общем, я ничего не поменял, готовлюсь так же, так же усердно. То есть делаю то же самое, может быть, немного больше. Но в целом, что все так же, так же, как обычно. Окей. Okay. Uh, nothing, nothing specific at the beginning of the of the training camp. He thought maybe something needs to be changed, but but he realized that uh, you know his his training is already good, and so he's uh he's continuing to train uh, very hard, continuing to condition himself and make sure that that everything goes well on March third. So not not anything specific was changed, just uh, hard training, training all the time. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Best of luck on the third. Thank you. I would like to thank um, Errol Salen for joining us today and Igor um, Mihalin for joining us. And now, um, also, uh, I want to thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. And now we have Sergei Korvalek on the line and Inga Klimas, his manager. And also, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to ask a question for these gentlemen, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. And I'm waiting for people to call, um, join the queue at this present time. And is, is Igor all set with the questions? I think Igor is, yeah, Igor can, uh, is free to go now. Thank you so much, uh, Igor and Errol. Игорь, спасибо тебе большое, уже, в принципе, ты свободен, поэтому, э, ну, как бы, да, все. Спасибо большое, до свидания. Игорь, uh, do you have anything you'd like to say yes. before we start? No, we just, wanted, we just wanted to hear questions. We have Sergei on the line in the first, and uh, whatever the media is ready, we're ready to answer the question. Okay. Okay. okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions at this time, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Okay, so our first question is going to come from um, Jeff from Hit First. Boxing, please go ahead. Sergey, welcome back to New York City. This will be your second fight. You're fighting the South Pole. What do you know about Igor? Hi, everybody. Uh... Yes, uh, my pleasure. Back to New York, uh, fighting uh, with uh, Igor Mikhail, against Igor Mikhail. Uh, I know this guy uh, since uh, amateur, uh, my my amateur boxing career uh, when I was uh, like maybe eleven years old, like. And right now we fighting that uh, much show. It's interesting for me. What are what are his strengths and weaknesses that you know of, Igor? Have you seen him in the amateurs? You seen him fight? Maybe you even sparred with him in the amateurs? I didn't understand the question. Uh, no, no, when I was you know, that's bueno. Yeah, uh, I know that uh, this is just a nice guy and uh, uh, very good boxer. You know, he's double, uh, he's IBO champion, and uh, and that just uh, he wanna get a champion of the world, you know, title, and I should to defend my WBO title. 
Marcel. You know any more I know about him. <laughs> well, that's it. Then, March 3rd, we'll see. Like they say, let the best man win. Thank you, sir. Our next question is going to come from Keith Idick from theboxingscene.com. Please go ahead. Uh, hey, Sergey. I was just wondering if you could tell us, you know, what McCalkin can do to kind of make things difficult for you in the fight that you have to guard against, being a southpaw, being a boxer, being a guy who moves. How do you kind of guard against that and make sure you get the knockout? Переводом помогите кто? А, ну что ты, что ты, что ты знаешь про него и что ты будешь делать по-другому, что как бы что тебе мог бы его накрутить? You know, I, I'm not going to to make some something extra to get a victory over Igor Mikhalkin. Because uh, I'm, I'm just a back already, uh, like uh, champion of the world uh, in, in in my last fight, and uh, I should be ready for every, uh, for everything because uh, he's very motivated right now, and I think so he's very excited about this fight with me. Uh, it's gonna be a very interesting fight because we are uh, the same mentally. Uh, Russians and uh, never step back, just a fighting for like, and we're ready to fight for world title, for world title. Sergey, will you be disappointed if you're not able to knock him out? Would you just try to say to when you're not good? Because you know, uh, it's not my goal to knock, but uh, knock somebody, knock somebody out. Every every round, every minute. I don't think about it. I just uh, get into the ring. We'll get into the ring and gonna to do my best uh, job, you know, for for boxing fans. Just uh, what will happen? We will see. Everybody must sure. and uh, just uh, watch the HBO or come to come uh, to theater medicine together. Thanks, Sergey. You're welcome. Our next question is going to come from Chris Williams from the Boxing Info. Please go ahead. Chris, did you have a question? Perhaps yeah, you muted your line. I'm still here. I'm still here. Hey, so guy, thanks for uh, having me, and thanks for joining us. Uh, I wanted to ask you, um, just going into this fight, I know you talked a little bit about not worrying about the knockout, but you wouldn't be Crusher Kovalev if you were knocking people out. That's what people want. How important is it for you to be in this stage satisfying fans with this fight? Sir, we barely can hear. Can you repeat the question, please? Something is very annoying. How important yeah, is it for Sergey? Can you hear me? Okay. How is it, how important is it for you to satisfy your HBO fans as well as the fans that will be attending and watching on TV? I know you say you weren't really, you know, you don't really go for the knockout, but you wouldn't be Crusher Kovalev if you weren't knocking people out. And that's what people expect. So how important is that to you to satisfy fans? Ну как, насколько тебе важно, что ты был удовлетворен в своем бою? Насколько тебе это важно? Чтобы он был нокаутирован, что ли? Связь вообще не слышу, не слышу. Пропадает, ну, пропадает. Чтоб, чтоб, да, чтоб, ну, чтобы ты был удовлетворен э, так, как ты боксируешь. Что для этого надо сделать? Да, ну что, да, что для тебя для этого надо сделать, чтобы ты был удовлетворен, что, как, ну, как, так, как ты боксируешь. I will, I will be very happy uh, after the fight when I will get the... Uh, I will get the victory 
uh, over the ego by knockout. You know, and I'm really happy when my boxing friends are uh, happy uh, of uh, the fight. And what's at the end of the question, Chris? Yeah, that, that's fine. And is Kathy still on the phone? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, and Kathy, I wanted to ask you, because I believe that you guys announced your date first, uh, March 3rd, your fight um, with the main event with HBO. And then the other guys came in and they announced their date. Did they try to work with you at all, or did anybody exchange any words saying, hey, look, we already got this date set in New York? Or is it just one of those things they announced it and everybody goes to business as usual? Nobody spoke to me. So, you know, as you know, we announced this date on uh, the night of Sergey's last fight back in November. Um, there are many dates that are held throughout the year for boxing events. They don't all happen on the date. Out there. I can only worry about things I can control. And unfortunately, one of those things. So. We're very happy with the, uh, with the response thus far from the fans. The ticket sales at this point have already exceeded what we did last time. Uh, in fact, okay. that has been the case uh, actually a couple weeks into the sale. So we expect a big, robust crowd, and I would I would advise anyone, especially you know if you're truly really not just a Sergey fan but a boxing fan, uh, this is a great show, top to bottom. It's not just about coming to see one fight; it's about coming for the whole night. I will not disappoint. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sergey and Kathy, for everything. Okay, so our next question is going to come from Greg Leon from the Boxing Talk. Please go ahead. How's it going, with Sergey? I guess. Good, good, Greg. How are you? Very good. Bye. Sergey, Bye. In, in your last several fights, you've been in there with pretty much nothing but the best of the best. Is it difficult for you to get motivated? for a fight like Igor the same way as a Hopkins or an Andre Ward. Последние бои у тебя были с самыми лучшими боксёрами, и сейчас когда Игорь приходит к тебе а на бой, то есть тебе как бы мотивация трудно удаётся мотивировать себя труд труднее чем там Вордом или или Зопкинсом. Я понял, понял. Uh, you know, like for me, every fight is like a call. Uh, it's a call, you know, like, and uh, right now uh, this call uh, got uh, Igor Mikhalkin. Nobody except him, you know, and I'm ready to fight anybody, but uh, who's right now is ready? Only Igor Mikhalkin. We have the best uh, guys right now. Uh, somebody retired. Somebody retired. Somebody uh, champion of uh, another belt, and they defend uh, their titles uh, against another uh, challenger. You know, like. And I'm fighting anybody who is ready to to get in, in, into the ring against me. And Igor Mikhalkin got this call. Okay. You haven't fought any southpaws since 2014 when you fought Agnew and Caparello, two southpaws back-to-back. -back. Who are some of the guys you've been sparring with to prepare for your first lefty in about four years? Since 2014, I've been fighting with Agnew and Caparello, two southpaws back-to-back. Who are some of the guys you've been uh, yes, it's a little, little bit uh, difficult to find to find somebody who uh, lo looking like uh, who looks like uh, Igor Mikhalkin, you know. But I'm ready to fighters, uh, you know, because it's just uh, we have a time already, like as far uh, I have a sparring already three weeks with the uh, South Pole, you know, and uh, day by day, fighting by far, uh, I feel much better, you know, and more comfortable against those players. And this means that it will be an interesting fight, you know. I, I, I'm really uh, excited that I'm fighting on East Coast already, and uh, but, uh, I just have, I'm really happy that I'm back. 
on the high level in the box high stage. Okay, um, that was the end of that question, I think, and I'm going to turn the call over to Gail. Thank you so much, and thank you to all the media who joined us today for the Sergey Kovalev versus Igor Mikalkin and Dmitry Bivol versus Sullivan Barrera International Media Conference call. You will receive a transcript of today's call. Please mark your calendar for the following important dates. A media workout featuring Dimitri Bivol will take place on Tuesday, February 20th in Los Angeles. A media workout featuring Sullivan Barrera will take place in Miami on Thursday, February 22nd. A New York media workout featuring all of today's conference call participants is scheduled on Tuesday, February 27th. The final news conference will take place Wednesday, February 28th in New York at the Garden. Please watch your mailbox for all of the latest details. This incredible lineup of fights will air on HBO World Championship Boxing live from the theater at Madison Square Garden on Saturday, March 3rd at 10.05 Eastern and Pacific. The main event between Sergey Crusher Kovalev and Igor Mikalkin is a 12-round matchup for the WBO Light Heavyweight World title. The co-main event features WBA Light Heavyweight World Champion Dimitri Bivol versus Sullivan Barrera in a 12-round title fight. Tickets are selling briskly. This event is headed for a sellout. Ticket prices range from $50 to $300 and are available online at Ticketmaster.com and the Madison Square Garden box office. This event is promoted by Main Events, Crusher Promotions, and World of Boxing in association with EC Box Promotion. Again, it will be televised live on HBO World Championship Boxing beginning at 10.05 Eastern and Pacific. And a final reminder, your request for media credentials is due on Friday, February 23rd. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Gail and Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. And we'll see you all guys in, uh, at the Garden in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Thanks, Kathy. Sergey Nagus, Thanks. I will see you on Saturday. Take care. <laughs> Next okay. week. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining. You may all disconnect and have a great day.